geometric uh, conditions okay so that's why this topic is named as geometric representation of signals okay so where we should be knowing some parameters the this m letter suggests the number of energy signals okay so the signal representation of this set of energy signals m is given by si of t where i would be ranging from 1 to m these m energy signals can be represented using n orthonormal basis functions okay so where m is less than or equal to n so here the values of m energy signals are less than or equal to the n set of orthonormal basis functions which are used one at a time okay so any signal can be represented as a linear combination of the orthonormal basis functions so any signal means if you consider that any signal as si of t okay it is one random signal in the uh, plot so we would be getting si of t as with we can be representing in terms of orthonormal basis functions as si of t is equal to si1 phi1 of t plus si2 phi2 of t plus goes on up to sin phi n of t okay so this can be written in short as si of t is equal to summation of j equal to 1 to n where these numbers here suggest the terms of j sij phi j of t where j would be varying from 1 to n so in this way the signals can be represented as a linear combination of orthonormal basis functions okay so this is the expression you need to be knowing for si of t so now with respect to that for a noiseless channel this expression how it can be written you see here these are the input combinations which are given that is the energy signals which we need to represent that is si1 si2 and it goes on up to sin and this is given through the uh, multiplier here that is phi1 of t phi2 of t up to phi n of t and these everything would be combined together and they will be summed up in the term si of t okay this expression is uh, represented here in terms of this block okay so please note this down this is nothing but these two are getting uh, some, uh, multiplied together and the product of it is getting added up in all these cases okay so totally we would be getting the term si of t okay just to represent it we have used it so now in order to get back the energy signal component from the si of t we should be considering the noiseless channel that is si of t again is splitted into different categories in order to get the inverse so we would be getting phi1 of t phi2 of t phi3 of t and all these terms up to phi n of t is are given passing through an integrator block okay so that if it when it passes through the integrator block we would be getting our getting back our energy signals which we have given as input in the previous case that is si1 si2 up to sin okay so this is the inverse process block diagram for the following geometric representation so please note this down also this is very important now let si of t into phi k of t b equal to summation of j equal to 1 to n si j phi j of t into phi k of t okay so what i have done is in the in the equation of si of t i have multiplied phi k of t that is one more set of orthonormal basis function on both sides okay why i have done it because i wanted to get the get back our original signal so that's why we needed this extra term now for a noiseless channel it is give, re represented as integration from 0 to t si of t phi k of t dt where i have uh, introducing this uh, integration on both sides so we would be getting that equal to summation of j equal to 1 to n sij into integration from 0 to t phi j of t into phi k of t dt so now if we assume the value of k equal to j then we would be getting integration 0 to t si of t phi j of t dt is equal to summation of j equal to 1 to n sij why because if you put j equal to k so these two terms would be equal to phi j square of t okay so we know that if we take the integration of the square of the orthonormal basis function we would be getting our answer as 1 so that's why we would be getting the final summation as summation of j equal to 1 to n sij so therefore we would be getting sij equal to integration from 0 to t si of t phi j of t dt where j would be ranging from 
1 to n okay any signal it can be represented in the form of n dimensional space vector it forms a Euclid euclidean space which is known as the signal space so how the signal space in terms of dimensional vector is represented as it is represented as this double lines here okay double magnitude okay so it is given as si square where this si is this line indicates that it is in the signal space okay so that is also given as sp comma si okay where uh, it is equal to si transpose into si okay so si transpose means one in row set and one in column set you need to be representing so therefore si square we would be getting it as si1 into si1 that is si1 square plus si2 into si2 si2 square and it goes on up to sin square so therefore the signal space si square can be given as summation of j equal to 1 to n sij the whole square where j would be ranging from 1 to n okay so in this way the signal space is uh, defined as for the geometric representation so whenever they ask problems with respect to signal space this formula you need to be knowing okay so now if you consider two vectors si and sj the angle between those two vectors with respect to their geometry is given as follows cos phi i j you should be considering the angle with respect to cos because it lies in the positive quadrant so that's why cos phi i j is equal to si comma sj divided by signal space si into signal space sj so si comma sj is given by si transpose sj and signal space si and st are getting multiplied so therefore if we take cos on the other side we will be getting cos inverse of si transpose sj divided by signal space si into signal space sj so this would be the angle which we will be getting geometrically if we consider two set of orthonormal basis functions phi 1 of t phi i of t and phi j of t with respect to the signal spaces that is sj si and sj okay so these are the parameters which you need to be noting down under geometrical representation of the signals okay so that's all guys for this video we have discussed uh, concepts related to geometric representation